Let's consider the following computer program. The first line is welcome is assigned hello world. What this will do, it will bind the identifier welcome to a string object that contains the string hello world. The next line, print welcome, will actually put to the screen the string hello world. Then we come here and what we've got, we've got an iteration construct, often referred to as a repetition construct. Because what's going to happen, this particular line here is going to be executed more than once because we're going to be in a loop. And when we see this particular line here for character in welcome, personally, I like to think of this in my mind's eye as being this, for each character in welcome. Now let me stress, each is not part of the Python language. This is why I've got it in bold here to draw your eye to it and it's in larger font because I'm saying this is what I personally do. I think right for each character in welcome and the each to repeat is not part of the actual language. But what is going to happen, we're going to have a loop taking place and I'm going to show that loop by this simple animation here. We're going to be going round and round executing the code that's inside the loop and of course what's going to execute is the print. Now how many times is it going to go round the loop? This is the question. Well the answer is it's going to actually depend on what's in welcome. And of course what we've got in welcome is hello world. So how long is hello world? Well the answer is you can count them and you can see it's 11 long. Remember to count the space between hello and world. So this print statement here is going to be executed 11 times. And it's going to take each character of hello world in turn. Because, to repeat, when I see this particular line here, I like to think of it for each character in welcome. So it's saying, right, for all of the characters that appear in this string hello world, execute this particular print statement. So now let's look at what happens when we execute this line. Well, we're going to get an object, which I've shown in previous videos, but here I'm focusing in on the value that I that object is going to have and we're going to label it with welcome so here we have hello world and then if we have a look at the runtime this is what we're going to get so when we come to print welcome it's going to print this to the screen then we come here and what we need to realize is when we see this it's going to go first of all to this entry to the h entry so when we print the character is going to be printing H as you can see it does here and then of course we're going to execute this line again because remember we're in a loop and now Python is going to choose the next entry in the string which is the E and it prints that to the screen as you can see here and of course it's going to execute this line again but now Python is going to go to the next character which is this one and print that to the screen now eventually it's going to come to be pointing to the last character in the string which is the D here. Consequently when this line is executed the D is output and then we stop going round the loop because we've been round it the 11 times which were dictated by the fact that there was 11 characters in the string hello world. Of course, the program now ends, and we can see these chevrons here showing us that the program has actually ended. But if this program was part of a, a much bigger program, what would happen in this area? You could have the rest of the code that could be executed. But the key here is we had this construct, which is an iteration construct, and we've executed this 11 times because the string has got 11 characters in it. And we have said to have iterated across the string, meaning we take each character in turn from the string. And all I've done here is print them to the actual screen so we can visually see what's going on. Of course, for this iteration here, it is important to realize that you need an identifier in this position. Because this, if you like, is a placeholder. So that when we pick every character in turn as we iterate across the string, we can use it here. 
in this position. So the first time in the loop, of course, character will take up the value of h. So here we can print that h. The next time through the loop, this takes up the value of e. So we can print e to the screen and so on. Now, of course, I've chosen this to be character. I could have chose it to be letter. I could have chose it to be x. But the point is something is actually needed here to enable us to iterate across a string as demonstrated in the video to date. Let's consider this computer program here. If we have a look at the first line, welcome is assigned the string hello world, and then we print welcome to the screen. So it'll print hello world on the screen. And here now we can see we have an iteration construct and it's slightly different to the previous one in the sense that this iteration has two lines of code. So these two lines of code will be repeated. Here we can see that I have got a variable called ANSI underscore value equals the odd of character. Now this particular odd function was covered earlier in the playlist, but essentially what it will do, it'll tell you what the number is for a letter. So for example, H has the value of 72 in our number system. Of course, in a computer, H will be represented by a binary pattern. But here, what we have got is an ability to work out using ORD what the number is that represents the characters that you type on a keyboard. So if, for instance, you type capital A, the computer generates the number 65, and that's how it understands what capital A is, using the number 65, of course, when 65 is in binary. And on this line, what I'm doing, I'm simply outputting the character and I'm outputting its ANSI value with these two strings to make the output make some sense when you see it as the user of the program. So let's run this program and see what we get as the output. But before we do so, let me just quickly remind you, when we see this line, I like to think of it as being for each character in welcome. So let's go and look at the runtime we can see it's here so when this line executes we print hello world and then we enter the iteration and the first time we go into the loop this particular value here character picks up h from the string so when we come to here h is passed in to odd and this returns the number 72 and stores it in ansi then we come on to execute this line so this string is sent here to the output this character is then sent to the output and at the moment it is holding h as you can see here then this string is sent to the output and then the ANSI value is sent to the output and of course that's 72 because the previous line worked that out for us on 72 is there and just briefly to remind you this here make sure there's a space between each of the outputs and go back and look at the print video that I did previously in the actual playlist. And now, of course, what happens? We go round the loop again, and these two lines are executed again. But on this occasion, character takes up the value of E. So when we come to this line, the odd works out what the numeric value of E is and gives it to this variable here. Then we come on to this line, so it outputs this lot. So this gets printed here. This gets printed here. We can see it's E. Then we put this string here. And then we put the ANSI value up, which is obviously 101. And now we go around the loop again. Now, I'm not going to describe every particular output. But one more I'm going to do. And it's when you actually pick up this here. You pick up the space. So the character now is a space. So when you pass the space to odd, the ANSI value will take up the value of 32. And when you print this line out, you can see that the character here is printed here as a space. And we can see it's got the value of 32. Now that's quite an important one for you to remember as a computer program. I always remember the space is 32 in ANSI and in ASCII values as well. Now, of course, how many times will you execute these two statements? Well, the answer is, it depends on how many characters are in this string. And um, there's 11. So you will have this print statement outputting 11 times. And if you count these lines here, you will see that there will be 
11 outputs resulting from the iteration across the string as represented by this construct here. Just to emphasize a point, I'd like to look at this computer program here. And if we look at the first line, you can see welcome is assigned hello. In other words, I've reduced this from hello world to just hello. And of course, if you count the characters in hello, there's five. So when this program executes, this iteration will iterate across the string welcome, and it will execute these two lines five times because there's only five characters in the string welcome. So when the program executes, what we will have are five outputs from this particular line of code here. So this is what we will get out. And we can see that this line gives us these five lines here. Five lines because the string was length five. And this print was executed five times because it appeared within this iteration construct that knew that it had to go round the loop five times because the string that it was dealing with had the length of five. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.